Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Bartek Skorupa and in this video I would like to tell you a few words about the issue that probably most of you encounter from time to time. I want to talk about the problems with the edges. Sometimes we want to take our image into Compositor and adjust some parts of it. Here I have created a rather extreme example with very strong colors in order to make the issues more visible. And let's say that I want to adjust the color of this monkey. It's obvious that I need the proper mask. And here I have created such mask. Let's at the moment not focus on the way of creating this, but I can assure you that this is the best mat that we can get. So it seems that having this and this, it should be pretty easy to change the looks of this monkey and we shouldn't face any problems. But unfortunately it is not so. Okay, so let's try to make some extreme changes, restricting them only to the area determined by this mat, and see what happens. Let me add color hue saturation value node, and let's link our image to this. Take a look at it, control shift click. Here I have the mat, let's take a look at it. And when I plug this one to the factor of hue saturation value node, all of the adjustments that we perform here in this node should affect only the monkey. So let's move the hue to the left. And although the mask, the mat that we created is perfect, it's clearly visible that we have some issues at the edges. Okay, so maybe this mat is not so perfect. It seems that we should cover a little bit greater area by this adjustments. So intuitively, we would like to expand this mask a little bit. So let's try to pass it through filter delayed a road node, let's plug it here and see what happens if we begin to expand this mask. Well, the problem doesn't disappear, it's beginning to be even more visible. So maybe instead of expanding this mask, let's shrink it. So no matter what we do, we don't get rid of the problem. We can of course try to change the mode to distance for example, try some different values, we can try several options and nothing helps. So we begin to ask ourselves why does it happen? Well, in fact, we don't have the problem with the mat. The problem is with the colors themselves. So first let's try to analyze and understand what's going on and then I will show you some solutions. Okay, so first let's get rid of this delayed erode node, it's not helpful at all. Control X. And here we have our composite and here's the original image. Let's take a look at the edges here at the original image. I will zoom in here. And what do we have here? In this area we have the color of the monkey. Here we have the colors of the background. But here, because I used some depth of field, we have the mixture of those colors and those colors. Let's try to sample one of the pixels. I will add input RGB. Let's click this color, use the color picker and sample one of those pixels. Let's pick this one. And let's take a look at this color in all of its glory. So I will control shift click this node and unfortunately we don't see anything here because this is just the color, it doesn't have any dimensions. So I will pass it through distort scale node and I will set this one to render size and here I have this color filling all of the area. Let's zoom out here a little bit. And when I take a look at the color of the monkey and the colors of the background, this one doesn't resemble any of them. But this is what happens when we begin to mix the colors. Okay, so now let's see what happens if we apply exactly the same adjustments to this color. So this is the original color of this pixel and this is the changed color and none of those colors give us anything even close to what we want. But what do we want? The only way to find that out would be to know the original color of the monkey in this area and original color of the background in this area. In most of the real situations we don't have such information. But here I can simulate this. I happen to have the separate render of the monkey and separate render of the background. Let's take a look at them. That's the render of the monkey alone and here's the background. Now let's mix the two, color mix, 
background, monkey, take a look at it and use the alpha channel of the second input. Let's zoom in to the same area that we are looking at here at this image. And as you can see, it doesn't look exactly the same because here we have the colors of the monkey pre-multiplied by the alpha values. So we have two options. We can convert the alpha, let me do it. Shift A, converter, alpha convert. Let's plug it here and change this one to pre-multiplied to straight. So this is one option and as you can see those colors are exactly the same. And the second solution would be instead of using the mix note, we could use the alpha over note. So let me duplicate those notes and add color alpha over note and connect them properly and we get exactly the same result. So let's get rid of those notes, let's make some room here and let's apply the adjustments to the colors of the monkey. So let's take this hue saturation value note, duplicate it, plug it here and that's exactly the result that we are looking for because here we had the chance to do exactly what we wanted, meaning we wanted to change just the colors of the monkey and we did it and then we composited over the original colors of the background. Here, in this setup, we didn't have this chance. In those areas, we are not operating on the colors of the monkey alone, but on the mixture. So in order to get the result that is close to this one, we would need to extract the original colors. Original foreground color and original background color. But is it possible? The only thing that we have is this and the alpha channel of the monkey. Is this enough information to extract the colors of the components here at the edges? Unfortunately not. We are dealing with one equation that has two unknown values. And when we try to dig a little bit in our memories and try to remind ourselves some of the early math classes, we remember that such equation has no solution. This is our situation. Here's the color of one of the pixels at the edge. And we know that it's a mixture of two colors. Color of the background and color of the foreground. This color is given to us. This color we know. And we also have the alpha value in this particular pixel. And it's this value. So what are the colors that can give us this color when they are mixed using this value of the alpha? Well, it is possible that those are the colors. Color of the background and color of the foreground. But this is not the only solution. We could as well, for example, mix such colors using this alpha and we would get exactly the same result. Those two colors would also give the same result. Those ones, those ones, those ones. And we can unfortunately find unlimited amount of those solutions, which means that we have no solution. So what can we do? I've been talking for several minutes and I keep saying that this is impossible, this is impossible, this is problematic. Is there any solution? Is there anything we can do? Yes, there is, but it's worth mentioning that every situation is different. There is no universal solution. We know what we have to deal with. And we know that we have to find some workarounds. And in one situation, one solution will work. In other situation, we would have to find another solution. So let me now show you what will work in this particular case. Okay, so that's our goal. That's the result that we are looking for. And here we will be watching what we are doing. First, let's detach this hue saturation value node. I will use it later when I am ready. Now, I will try to recreate the colors of the background in this area and the colors of the foreground. First, let's take care about the background. Those are the only colors that I have to my disposal. And this is the alpha channel. So let's apply this alpha to this image. So I will use converter set alpha, plug it here, and use this as the alpha. But I don't want the monkey, but the background. So I have to invert this alpha. So let's add color invert and plug it here. 
but here at the edges we are still dealing with the mixture of the colors of the background and the monkey. So let's adjust this alpha channel a little bit more. I will pass it through converter color ramp and I will try to get rid of those edges. So I will simply drag this black handle and move it to the right. This should be enough. So now we have just the pure background. But we are missing the background in those areas. So it would be good to expand the colors here from the edges to this area. And fortunately we have the node that is capable of doing so. And it's called InPaint. Let me add it. Shift A, Filter, InPaint. Let's plug it here and see what happens when we begin to increase this distance. The colors of the edges begin to expand here. And it seems that this is exactly what we are looking for. Let's mute this note, unmute it. And it's obvious that the background in those areas doesn't look exactly the same. But I wouldn't much worry about it. Those areas will anyway be covered by the colors of the monkey. So I could set this value to something extreme, like let's set it to 300, for example. But sometimes it's not the best solution, so let me set it back to something like 30. I don't need such huge expansion. Now let me make this image fully opaque. So I will duplicate the set alpha node, plug it here, and this way I have set the alpha value to 1 all over the picture. I don't care about bringing back this monkey here in this area. This will surely be covered by the image that I will create just in a moment. So that's our background. Let's make some order here. And now let's create the image of the monkey and I will use exactly the same technique. The image that I will be using for this is exactly the same image that I used here. So let me duplicate the set alpha node, move it here. Plug the image to this, F, let's take a look at it. Now I have set the alpha to 1 all over the picture and this is not what I want. I want to set this alpha to this. So let me take this image and plug it here and take a look at the result. So I have the monkey alone, but here at the edges I have some colors of the background mixed into it. So I will do exactly the same thing that I did with the background. I will duplicate this ramp and plug it here. And this should be enough. And let's now expand those colors. And I will use exactly the same in-paint node. So let me duplicate it, plug it here. And this is what I get. So now I will give this image the proper alpha channel. So let me duplicate this set alpha node, plug it here. This, of course, brought back the rest of the image, but in this case, I would want to use this as the alpha channel. So let me take it and plug it here and take a look at the result. Let's zoom in and take a look at the edges. And it seems to be working. So now I think we are ready to apply the adjustments. So let me take this hue saturation value node and plug it here. So we have two images, background and here we have the foreground. So let's now use the alpha over node to mix the two. Shift A, color, alpha over, take the background, plug it here, take the monkey, plug it here, Take a look at the result. Oops, not good. But when we turn this checkbox convert pre-multiplied on, we get the result that we are looking for. And in this case, we could merge those two images together, not using the alpha over node, but we could as well use the color mix node and simply plug the background to the upper socket, foreground to the lower socket. Take a look at the result. Turn this checkbox on and we get exactly the same result. So we have two options. Let's zoom in and compare those results. Maybe this is not perfect, especially here in this area, but I don't think anyone will notice this. And now when we created such setup, we can apply any adjustments we want to the monkey and nobody will notice that something is wrong at the edges because it's not. Let's change this hue. Let's move it 
the other way. Lower the value, increase the saturation or decrease the saturation. So that's one of the solutions to the problems with the edges. Just the little in-paint note that when used properly can make dreams come true. So that's all from me in this episode. Bartek Skorupa for BlenderCookie.com. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.